Okay, guys, so this is part two of our revision series on alkali metals. In part one, we discuss the atomic and ionic ready as well as their ionization energy. In this lesson, we are going to have a thorough discussion on their physical properties as well as chemical properties. So let's dive in. Physical property number one, they are soft and silvery in appearance. Now, when it comes to softness, they are so soft, you can easily cut them with a knife. And the reason for this is because they have weaker metallic bonds compared to other metals. And yes, they are silvery and shiny. But you will find that when you have a surface and you freshly cut it, it easily tarnishes, you know, it becomes dull after a short exposure to air. This simply means that if you cut it and let it be exposed to air after some time you come back, you're going to note that the appearance has become dull. Now, the reason is because it undergoes oxidation. You've exposed it to air, and these are metals that are very reactive. So they react with air, specifically with oxygen, to form oxides, which are less shiny than the actual metals. And that is the reason why they tarnish after a short time. Moving on to another property, they have low melting and boiling points. I want you to look at the melting point of lithium sodium. Sodium has a melting point of 98. That means if you were to take a solid piece of sodium, heat it to 98 degrees Celsius, it's going to start melting. So quite low compared to other metals. And the reason is tied to their bonds. So they have weaker metallic bonds compared to other metals. Another property has to do with their density. They have low densities. In fact, their densities are even lower than that of what? And that is the reason why you'll find that if you were to cut a piece of uh, sodium, place it in a basin of water, it's going to float around the surface. It does so because it is less dense compared to water. Last physical property, they are good conductors of both electricity and heat. This simply means that they can conduct heat and electricity very well. Now, the reason is because they have delocalized electrons within their structures. These are electrons that can easily move within the structure. And when they do so, they carry with them the electric current or heat, and that makes them good conductors of heat and electricity. Now, guys, let us proceed to the chemical properties. So when alkali metals react, remember, they lose their single valence electrons. I hope you do remember this. So all alkali metals react by losing their valence electrons. Out of the three, potassium is the most reactive because it's the one that most readily loses the valence electrons. So our first reaction has to do with air. And guys, when I talk about a reaction with air, I'm talking about how these metals react with oxygen because oxygen is the active part of air. It's the one that takes part in reactions. So there's no other component I would be referring to. Now, number one, how do these metals react with oxygen? So they react with oxygen in air to form their respective oxides. So what do I mean by this? Lithium reacts with oxygen to form lithium oxide. There it is. So in case you're wondering, what's with the formula? Lithium, remember, has a valency of one. It has one valence electron and therefore it has a valency of one. Oxygen in most cases has a valency of two. When these interchange, you end up having this formula. Now, when lithium burns in air, it burns with a beautiful scarlet flame, you know, a red flame. And the solid that is formed is white in color. In case you're wondering, okay, which solid are we referring to? Lithium oxide, my dear students. Now, what about potassium? Potassium burns in oxygen to form potassium oxide. It burns with a characteristic flame color. The color of the potassium flame is lilac, such a beautiful color. By the way, I want to say this. When it comes to metal, each metal has a characteristic color when burnt in a non-luminous flame. Now, in the case of uh, lithium, it's red. In the case of potassium, it's lilac. In the case of sodium, you're going to have a golden yellow flame. Now, this is actually called flame test. So, these tests can be used to investigate the presence of certain metal ions. If you would like to find out more about flame tests, and I bet you would be because this is so interesting, Find out more in this particular video of mine. Now, moving on to sodium. Now, when it comes to sodium, 
Sodium can form two different oxides depending on the concentration of oxygen. Do you have enough oxygen? Do you have little of it? Now, when sodium burns in a limited supply of air, you know, whereby you don't have enough oxygen, it forms a white solid called sodium oxide as such. But when sodium burns in air that is rich in oxygen, it forms a compound that is known as sodium peroxide. And that is its formula. Now, guys, let me tell you one very important thing. You see all of these oxides that you are mentioning? By the way, an oxide is simply a compound that contains one element combined with oxygen. So in this case, I'm talking about lithium oxide, sodium oxide, potassium oxide. All of these oxides are basic oxides. What is a basic oxide? A basic oxide is an oxide that forms an alkaline solution when dissolved in water. So if you were to take all these oxides, dissolve them in water separately, they're going to form a solution that will turn a red litmus paper blue, essentially an alkaline solution. So if I were to take sodium oxide, dissolve it in water, I will end up having sodium hydroxide, guys. And sodium hydroxide is most definitely alkaline. By the way, guys, if you see a solution and it has the term hydroxide in its name, that's no, that is an alkaline or a basic solution. Moving on to the second one. How do these metals react with water itself? So imagine I wanted to react lithium with water. What will happen? What observations am I going to see? What are the products that are going to be formed? Let us answer these questions here. So number one, you need to know that when it comes to alkali metals, they react vigorously with water. Yani they are quite reactive with water. Now they react with water to form a hydroxide and hydrogen gas. So in the case of lithium, you're going to end up having lithium hydroxide and hydrogen gas, sodium plus water, sodium hydroxide plus hydrogen gas. Again with potassium, same thing. So remember when I told you that all members of one group are going to have similar chemical properties? This is the reason why. The way they react, you're going to end up having similar products being formed. That is a metal hydroxide and hydrogen gas. So for example, if I were to take a piece of sodium and place it in water, these are the following observations that I will have. Number one, you're going to see it darting on the surface of water. You know, it's skating on the surface of water. The reason for this is because as stated before, these are metals that are less dense than water and therefore they will be floating on top of the surface of water. Now, it's going to be moving around producing a hissing sound. You're going to notice too that these effervescence, you know, bubbling, and this is attributed to the formation of a gas, specifically hydrogen gas that is being produced. Now, because we are forming metal hydroxides, we should expect a hundred percent that the solution is going to be alkaline. So, if you were to test it, you're going to have the following observation. Now, out of these three, which is the one that is most reactive? As stated before, the one that is always most reactive is potassium. So potassium is the most reactive followed by sodium and lastly lithium. Next reaction, that with chlorine. How do the alkali metals react with chlorine gas? So when alkali metals are heated and reacted with chlorine, they form corresponding chlorides. Okay, this simply means that if you were to react lithium with chlorine gas, you're going to end up having lithium chloride, sodium and chlorine gas, sodium chloride, potassium and chlorine gas, potassium chloride. So you're going to observe white solids being formed. Now guys, I want to draw your attention on something. You're going to note that when it comes to alkali metals, because they are so very reactive, they can form a variety of compounds. But all of the compounds that they form will always have similar formulae. Now look at this table. That is lithium, sodium, and potassium. Look at their oxides. They have the same formula. Look at their hydroxides. Again, same. The only thing that is changing is the actual symbol of the elements of the alkali metals. What about their chlorides? Look at the carbonates. Look at the sulfates. Now what is happening here? What is happening is that because these metals belong to the same group, they will therefore have the same valency. They have one valence electron and therefore have one valency. 
So if they have one valency, they are going to have similar formulae. So let's take an example of lithium. Lithium has the valency of one. Sulfate ions have a valency of two. When these interchange, you end up having that formula. What about potassium? Again, a valency of one. Sulfate ions have a valency of two. When these interchange, you get that. I don't know if I'm communicating with you. I hope I am. So essentially, my point is this. If you manage to memorize the formulae of lithium, you're good to go when it comes to potassium and sodium. All you need to remember is whatever formula for lithium there is, it's going to be similar to that of sodium and potassium. And that, my dear students, brings us to the end of this lesson.